head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Ferret Out. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today we are a gang of ferrets getting together to conduct business, but we can sense that one of us doesn't belong, and they're a weasel, but they don't even know they're the weasel. What? Let's check out Ferret Out. This is a party game from r and Games, and I'm saying this is a game that, like, it's Spyfall and Just One had a baby. Let me show you. In Ferret Out, each player is going to get a pen of their color and a little easel here, and everyone is going to secretly get one of these envelopes that sort of looks like this. Now, what's going to happen is everyone is going to secretly look at their card, and then a die is going to be rolled. So let's say the die is rolled, and let's say it was a five. Everyone secretly looks at their thing here, and we see pie. And everyone's going to come up with a one-word clue that matches pie. However, here's the twist. Everyone except one player has this card. One player has a different card with a different uh, word on number five. But they don't even know that they're the odd person out because you're only looking at your oars. So you don't know if you're in with everyone else, a ferret, or you're on your own, the weasel. So in this case, we put pie. Now the reason why you want to be, you want to put a, a word behind your shield here secretly that matches this, a one word clue, but you want it to be something that is still somewhat vague because if you're not the weasel, meaning you're on the ferret team, you don't want the weasel to be able to guess what word you're trying to talk about. Let's show you an example. So for example, I say American because a lot of times people say, hey, that's as American as apple pie. Again, some people might get that reference, but it's not like apple pie or blueberry pie or crust or something like that. Those might be a little too obvious. So let's show you a game of maybe five players and what this might look like once everyone has written their word. So then everyone turns uh, their thing around and it says that you could start a timer as people think to guess. I don't ever think I've ever needed this. The only time I've actually needed this is while people are writing words. I usually play it where when there's only one person left that hasn't finished, then I flip the timer, make sure they don't sit there thinking forever. I've never needed a timer for this aspect, but you're going to look at this and see, well, which person do you think is the weasel? Now we know we had pie right? And we know that we had wrote American and everyone else is seeing that, right? All these players are seeing that and we're seeing what theirs are. So I'm looking around, I'm going, am I a ferret? Am I with everybody else? Do all these other things have to do with pie? Let's see, pizza pie, yeah. Milk, I guess, possibly. Kitchen, it's made in the pie. Sky, huh, I don't know. Right? You think, of it, hmm, maybe this person's the ferret. You're like, I don't think I'm the ferret because pizza and kitchen and pie, I think I'm good. Uh, so you would write down whoever you think the ferret is right here, whoever this player is, right? Let's say it's, we, th we think it's Sky, um, because we're not on the same wavelength as this player, right? Uh, and so we would do that. We would write, everyone writes their name, and then we do like this reveal. Now, we already know, because we already know that, that it's Pi. So which person here do you think the, the, the ferret is? So you could pause it here and think. We know it's not me, and we know it has to do with Pi. Which one of these do you think the ferret is? I bet you most of you might think this. However, um, I'm not sure, maybe not. So in this case, everyone would write their name right here and then everyone would, re would reveal. The twist is, again, you're trying to figure out if you're the weasel. If you think you're the weasel, you would write your own name here and then you would write a, the one word clue that you think all these other people were together having. Because if we're the weasel, and we write our name here, that means all these players were writing the same, were, had the same word that they were trying to get us to, to, you know, to guess. So if you were the weasel, you think you're the weasel, you write your name here and you're like, hmm, what were they doing? And essentially you're sort of playing like that popular game Just One at this point where you're like, what were they trying to do? Pizza, milk, kitchen, sky. Now in this case, we know we're not the weasel. So I'm just like sort of playing devil's advocate here of like what you would do. So that's what you would do if you were the weasel, you thought you were. Otherwise you write whoever you think is the weasel here. So at this point, I like to, before people flip over and say who they think it is, I like to do a reveal where everyone flips their card over and says the word, pie, 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 pie. And then someone had something else. Someone had spill. Uh-oh. So I like to do that because it's sort of a reveal, and then you reveal who you thought was, and then you all laugh and talk about it. So in the end, what really happened was we had pie, they had pie, they had pie, they had pie. We were thinking... It was this person that was the weasel, but it wasn't. Because 
pie in the sky is a pretty well-known phrase. This person had spill. They just happened to have said, hey, spilled milk. Don't cry over spilled milk. They put milk and it was on there. So sometimes, now a lot of times you don't have things that could possibly be there. Like if it was six, it would have been match and one person would have had lead. Eh, it's possible. Winner, you could have done and something like that. So there are, they're, they're cleverly thought about. Now here, this is the interesting thing. It's like this player was not the weasel. This one was. Now, what if they had written oil instead of spill, right? Oil spill. Well, we would have seen pizza, oil, kitchen, sky. I might have still picked this person if I wasn't on that same wavelength of pizza, you know, pie in the sky. You got to be on the same wavelength of people. Uh, so let's tell you, that, that shows you how different things, how you might think differently and things like that. So let's talk about how scoring works. Now scoring are these little tokens here. And so each ferret, we were a ferret, right? If we guessed the weasel correctly, we would put one. We would get a point. If all ferrets guess the, the weasel correctly, all ferrets get an additional point. And if the weasel did not guess the word that we were trying to say, we all get another point. That's why you want to be somewhat vague is because you don't want the weasel to be able to guess what the word was. So the most the ferrets can score are three points. The weasel scores, if any ferret doesn't guess the weasel, meaning if, if even one person didn't correctly guess the weasel, the weasel gets a point. If the, the weasel guessed what the word was, uh, they would get two points right here. And if they guess what th that they were the weasel. So if you guess you're the self that is the weasel and you were right, and if any ferret guess didn't guess you, and you guess the word, you could actually get four points. So it really works. It, it's kind of takes a few rounds to kind of get this down, but this nice little player aids here. And that's how scoring works. So how does this facilitate who gets what? Now there are a ton of these envelopes and in these envelopes are a set of cards and all the cards are identical in here. So typically what you'll do is you'll randomly take two of these sleeves and in each of these sleeves, for example, they all have the same card, right? Just like this one. Um, and so what's going to happen is you're going to take one of these cards uh, for each player minus one, essentially, because there's going to be enough ferrets for, you know, all the players minus one. And it's best if one player does this just to make sure no one screws it up because it would break the game is everyone. So that player one at a time would take these little these little uh, secrecy shields here and they would place the cards here. So this shows like a green, for example. So what they do is they wouldn't look at any of these cards. They would sort of like do it so that they're not looking at them. They kind of look up a little bit and they just slot this in like this. So you're not looking at the words as you're putting them in upside down in the shield and you're just making sure that everyone has the same color. Then you're going to take a second one of these envelopes. You're only going to take one card of these and you're also going to put it in a shield. That makes it say that one person is going to have a different word from everyone else. Once you've done that, you shuffle all these up and you reel, and you deal them out face down like this. That means one person is going to have a different word from everyone else. Once everything's done and you're done with that round, this kind of shows you how you do it. You insert before round one. Before round two, you take all of these and you rotate it. So without looking, you just kind of look up. You don't, you don't look at these words as you're doing it. You're just careful. Boom. Then it's going to be yellow. You do that for all of them. After that one, you flip. So you take this like this and you're going to sort of flip it like directly. So again, not looking at the card, you'll flip it. You purposely don't look. And now you have this. And then before the last round, you'll rotate one more time. And so each of these cards is basically good for four rounds. You will play. Uh, I say either eight rounds or to 15 points, whatever happens first. Usually it's eight rounds. Um, and so that's it. When you're done with this, that gets you through four rounds. When you're done, you take all the cards out, you put them back in the envelopes, and you randomly take two more envelopes for basically the second half of the game and you start that process over again. That's pretty much how it's facilitated. Um, there is an app. And this app will help you create a room and you can play with others so you don't have to uh, fiddle with, you know, putting the envelopes and stuff together. Um, you do need to put an activation code that's on the inside of the box to prove that you've actually bought the game. Uh, and this just makes, allows you to play it, I guess, quicker with less, you know, uh, upkeep of manualing the, the, the envelopes. Uh, personally, I like, I don't mind it. it. It takes a little bit of time, but I'd rather play with the easels and, 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 and you know, and, and play with you know, everything on the table as of this. But for those that think they'd rather have it electronically so it's a little bit faster and easier to play, you could play it with the app as well.
Now, before I get to the review, I wanna let you know that if you enjoy my content on my channel and you wanna get some bonus content and help the channel at the same time, I recently started a Patreon page where you can get all sorts of bonus exclusive material like first impressions videos. And many times I do it on games that don't, I won't just end up reviewing at all. Uh, you can also vote on which games I review. You can get stuff early, lots of different things. So check it out at patreon.com slash gameboygeek. All right, let me tell you what I like about the game. First of all, the fun theme and art. I just, you know, the whole ferret thing is cute. The, the art's cute of the box. Uh, I, I just like that aspect that we're like gang members, but we're ferrets and one of us is a weasel. The art looks nice in the box, things like that. Uh, as I said in the overview, the, the intro, this essentially is like as if Just One, which was like the game of the year, the Spiel des Jahres winner, party game, that was cooperative, and Spyfall, which was a hidden, a hidden role game, had a baby. And if you're like, oh man, that sounds interesting. And it is interesting. It's one of those games that you're like, I can't believe this hasn't been done before. Taking those two things, put it together, and it just works so well. Now there's some, there's some unique things to the game. It's not just they pasted these two things on. But I like this because in Spyfall, I liked Spyfall a lot. But it was hard to go over because that game creates, and a lot of social deduction games create so much pressure on the bad people that some people just don't want to play them. Or you have to purposely lie and deceive people a lot of time in trader games, and a lot of people don't like that. And I totally get why that would happen. In this game, you could be the hidden trader, but you have no pressure, because not even you knows you're it. And when you do figure it out, you don't have to lie, you don't have to backstab, you just have to play just one at that point. I love this. This is such a unique concept that really opens the door of like mass market games with a hidden trader. Oh my gosh, this, is, this fills a niche that I don't feel really has been filled before. Uh, I like that you're trying to give good but vague clues. Lots of party games do this. Dixit was the one that sort of made this really popular in the more modern age. Of course, Just One is like that as well. But you're trying to give clues, but not too good, but you kind of want people to know that you're not the weasel, you know, things like that. I like that you're writing on one side of the easel, and then you flip it over, everyone sees your word, and then you're writing on the back of it as who the weasel is. Uh, that's kind of a cool sort of just production thing that just works. Of course, there's basically like the same, similar easels that are in like just one. Uh, I like that when you're guessing the weasel, you're looking around, you're like, oh, what doesn't belong? And again, because people are putting words that are like, yeah, that's kind of like this, but maybe not. And some people are trying to think out of the box like you do in just one. And it's like, hmm, what is this? And maybe you're not on the same page as someone else. And you're like, that person's got to be the weasel, right? But no, it ends up being someone else. It's crazy. Or you're looking at all these words, you're like, Hmm, all these words have something to do with each other. Mine doesn't, I'm the weasel. And it's just like this clever thing where you're trying to figure out, am I the bad guy or not? And then if you are the weasel, you're now playing just one, essentially, because you are, if you're not, you don't know for sure yet, but you're looking at all the other words and you're going, what word, one word were they trying to describe? And like, it's essentially like playing just one at that point. It's just so clever. Uh, I, it's, it just works so, so well. It's so fun. I recently just had a huge game party at my studio. We had over 40 people here. We had two tables of this running, and this was the hit of the day. We played, for, we played games for 12 hours, noon to midnight, many games, everything from light party games all the way to heavy strategy games. Ark Nova was played there at the end of the night. And everyone was like, this game was the hit of the party. It, it, the tables are hooping and hollering and no, oh, this is so good. It's, this is going to be a special party game for this year. In fact, uh, I'm gonna go on record and say, there's no way this isn't at least gonna be in the conversation on the short list of party game of the year for me. Uh, that's how, how much I like this. There's variants, uh, like Paranoia, like your, uh, with smaller player counts, it's great, where you add an extra envelope in so you're not even sure if there's a, a weasel for sure. And that's really cool. So is there anything negative about the game? Sure, no game's perfect. Uh, updating the cards between rounds, first of all, really should be done by one player because if one person screws it up, it'll break the whole game. So usually it's the person, like me, or whoever's running the game, takes all the envelopes, and you're doing the thing. Like first you, you turn it, then you flip it, then you turn it, and then you're done, right? And so it seems easy, but it's also quite easy to screw up if you don't know what you're doing, right? Or you forget where you're at. So it's really best for one player to do it. And that, since it's really best with one player to do it, it does take some time. It does slow down, down the game a little bit. And when you get through the first four rounds, which is half the game, you've got to use all new envelopes and set, them, you know, and, and set them all up and stuff like that. So it is a little bit of downtime. However, to combat this, there is an app available, a free app. You have to put in a code. There's a sticker on the inside of the box to show that you've bought the game. You put in this like random code. 
uh, and you can play the game. You can actually play it with the app right there, which completely solves that problem. But as I can imagine, I still prefer the moving the cards around and having physical things in front of me as opposed to like typing words in and doing stuff on the app. That's just me. But if it bothers you enough, there's an app, they give you that option. Uh, also, the other thing is I like the scoring in the game. I think it all makes sense. I like that the the, we, the, the ferrets are trying to guess the, the, the weasel. They're trying to have all the ferrets guess them, and they're trying not to let the weasel guess what word they're guessing, where the weasel's trying to guess who the weasel is and guess the word if it's them uh, and things like that. Uh, the scoring works well. You can score more points as a weasel, but it's hard to do, but you can do it. But it often, because the scoring is so tight, it often ends in ties. And sometimes you'll have multiple rounds in ties. The last game we played of this, uh, it was a tie, and then there was four of us, and then some of us tied again and again. And sometimes it can go on and on, and it's a party game, so whatever. Uh, I usually play eight rounds or 15 points, whoever does first. That's kind of like what the rules say a little bit, but uh, but that's it. Those are the two negative things. Is that it can end in a lot, a lot of ties and such. It's a party game. Who cares? Uh, you can finish it off if you want to keep going for the tiebreakers. Overall, again, as I mentioned, this is a very special party game. It's definitely going to be on my short list of party game of the year at the end of this year, for sure. I know mean, it's going to at least be in the conversation. And for all those reasons, this is getting a saxophone serenade. Do not slip on this. This is a special party game. This has been the Game Boy Geek. Breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games by helping you find the next one you love. Let's hit it. <laughs> Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table into a high quality gaming solution, but they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with over 20 styles of thematic game mats in 11 different sizes from notable board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and real cool accessories, experience what thousands of other gamers enjoy by upgrading every game you play with a Game Topper system. Save hundreds of dollars on Game Topper package deals that are in stock now for immediate shipping at GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below.